college football, and boy, do we have some good matchups to discuss, including number three, Michigan, heading to Happy Valley to take on number 11, Penn State. Wolverines have won their last two meetings against the Nittany Lions, including in Happy Valley in 2021. Number 18, Utah heads to Seattle to take on Michael Penix Jr. Number five, Washington. The Huskies coming off a big win over USC and now face a much better Utah defense than they did in L.A. And there's a big one in the SEC this weekend. Number 10, Ole Miss takes on number two, George. These two teams last met in 2016 when Kirby Smart first took over at Georgia. However, it was Ole Miss who came away with the win 45-14. Lane Kiffin, head coach, Ole Miss. The Rebels 8-1 for a second consecutive year. George is up next, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN. And, Lane, I'm going to get to the football in a minute. But the show staff demanded that I check in on Juice first. How is he? Juice is doing well. Uh, I don't think he's going to make the travel squad and make the road team uh, this week. Uh, they, don't, they don't allow other uh, animals on the sideline, I was told. So <laughs> we're never leave Juice behind and someone's going to have to step up. Juice and Ugo would be an all-time sideline matchup. I think the, the ratings on that would be through the roof. And I don't want to throw the little man under the bus, but he had an awful game against LSU last month. Missed to cut the tee a couple of times. Is, is he coachable? He is. Now, in his defense, uh, the trainer, um, I was told, did not do any walkthroughs with him or any prep. And so he would not <laughs> been used to being under the lights. And the game was uh, under the lights. And they changed the color of the tee oh. on him without telling him. So, I mean, you know, sometimes you got to look at coaching, not the players. That's true. Okay, well, that's a great segue to my next question because it appears he's been coached up. It would appear you have coached up Jackson Dart this year. We had talked about it pre-Egg Bowl, about how it's all there, but he just needs to take that next step. In your mind, how has he taken that next step this year? Well, he played really well versus a great A&M defense Saturday, and so now he's going to have a, a bigger test uh, on the road against – you know, the best team in college football for years. They haven't lost there in over five years. So this is a huge challenge for him. Players got to make plays around him. We got to do a good job coaching around him in order to have a chance. I mentioned eight and one for the second consecutive year. And, and, and people tend to look at Ole Miss and they go, well, that's, that's a really good story. Lane's having a really good year. Ole Miss is having a really good year. But how do you take it from being a really good story and team to now SEC West champs? Well, we're not worried about the SEC West champs right now. That's part of that's out of our control. So we're worried about uh, preparing really well today and going to play the most challenging game that you could possibly have. I mean, two-time defending national champs. Like I said, they haven't lost there in before COVID, five years, and um, you know, do a great job offense, defense, special teams, and have elite coaching to match elite players and elite crowd. So this is the trifecta of test here. So this will be fun. Why, why do you to lose? Yeah, I mean, it really is. You're going against the team. I think the ten and a half point favorites last check. Two time defending national champions. I don't think they've lost a game 26 consecutive, as you said. When you look at that, George is a standard. Alabama is a standard. LSU is a standard in this conference. How can you make Ole Miss one of those standards? Well, that's down the road. You know, we just got to keep playing well, uh, find a way to win the games, get to 1-0 each week, and then worry about the next week after that. So, uh, like I said, this is a giant challenge and the biggest one you could possibly have. So, and you just said double-digit underdogs, no one expecting us to have a chance. So, kind of like playing with house money. What do we have to lose? Let's just go uh, take a shot. And, look, you know that, that part of the success in college football nowadays is the transfer portal. You've navigated that well. How have you been able to find so much success in the portal when really it, it could be a coin flip? Yeah, it is challenging. Uh, everybody, it's kind of like free agency um, in professional sports. You know, it sounds great and you sign these guys, but then you got to mesh them together and you got to get everybody to play really well together as well because everybody, you know, wants the ball or wants to be the star. So uh, it's not just as easy as, oh, just sign guys because you've seen around the country where that's worked and where it hasn't worked. So. Um, I give a lot of credit to our players. This is a really neat, cool group of players to coach. Like I love coming in here every morning, seeing the guys. They fire me up. I'm just excited to coach them. They're, they're really special. And what is it about that chemistry? I, I think each year, as you know, a team takes on a, a different chemistry, a different approach. How would you identify what this team is at this point of the season? 
Yeah, you say each year, and that now is the case, especially um, in college football, when you use the portal. You know, half the roster is new every year, so it's like a brand new, you know, start over again each season. So this has been fun. That's been challenging, and um, it's awesome to see them come together uh, this quickly in the season and overcome a lot of adversity within games. Listen, there's adversity all around college football. You're an offensive coach. You've been around coaching in football your entire life, and it's the biggest story off the field in the sport just for another perspective as a guy that's a, it's a play caller and a head coach, where do you land on sign stealing? Well, I mean, there's rules on that. So um, I think they're pretty clear. Um, obviously, they happen, as we know, within games. And coaches talk to each other and those things. But that, that's a whole other animal, what the accusations are there. And, um, you know, that, that would dramatically change how you perform as a team and dramatically change what your record would be. So... Um, I don't know any details of it, but, you know, th those would be severe things if those were true. Yeah, look, here's what we know about college football. Every day, every week, there is something different about this sport. It's why we love it. The passion is off the charts, and we are getting to the back half of November. Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss, trying to snap that Georgia 26-game winning streak Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Lane, good luck. You've been fun to watch. Can't wait to watch you on Saturday. Give me something fun.